Hey there guys, today I want to talk a little bit about this little camera that I'm filming with right now that I've been using for about the past year and a half, a little bit more than that, since September of 2018. That is the Panasonic Lumex G85. Really, I'm just going to be talking about a few of the things about this camera that I really like, which there's a lot of things about that I really like, and maybe a couple of things I think that maybe could be slightly better. Now, when I first bought this camera, I actually made a video on my channel sharing my first impressions of it, and I said in that video that I'd be making a review or something like that about it, you know, shortly. It's been a year and a half, and I'm just now getting around to doing that, but I think that's a good thing because I've gotten plenty of time to actually use this and see what I really like about it. I've actually used this camera for video and photography. I use it for both. Um, so I use it for my videos on this YouTube channel and also all the photography that I do, which I'm going to share some examples of some photos I've taken with this camera just so you can kind of see what it looks like. And I think it's a really fantastic video camera and it's a fantastic photography camera, stills camera as well. For audio, I'm using the Rode Video Micro, which is on top of this with the, the dead cat wind muff on it. You can get some like more expensive Rode mics, but this one is a bit cheaper, it's lighter, it doesn't have a battery, so it's powered by the camera, which is great. So you don't have to worry about the batteries going dead while you're using it or not having to carry around like extra batteries with you. So I really like that as well for, for a microphone. The Rode Video Micro has worked pretty, pretty well. So the first thing, I feel like the price point, you can't really beat on this camera. Like, I know it's been out for a few years now. I think it came out in like 2016. So it's been out for like three or four years. They actually came up with an upgrade to this camera they came out with like several months ago the g95 i believe which i've not used but that's like the upgrade to this camera but i still think that this one is pretty fantastic and the price has actually gone down on it i paid 800 dollars for it when i bought it a year and a half ago but i think now the price has actually gone down to 700 so it's a fantastic deal um, for what you get with this it's it's pretty amazing it comes with a 12 to 60 millimeter lens that's the kit lens it comes from with i also use a 25 millimeter lens that i bought uh you know later on so i use those two lenses on interchangeably and any of the lenses in the micro four thirds system from lumix panasonic will, will work on this camera which is really cool so if you were to upgrade to a g9 later on all the lenses you bought for this camera will work on those ones as well so that's a pretty pretty awesome thing it's also weather sealed which for me has been pretty invaluable considering that I'm always shooting outside like I am today. Uh, I do a lot of landscape photography, travel photography when I'm traveling and I make my vlogs as well. So I think there's been many times that I've been out, you know, probably out filming or shooting and it just starts raining or snowing or whatever and I don't have to worry about it because I know that it's not going to be a problem if it gets wet. Like I've gotten this thing like, honestly, like I've got it like soaking wet and it's always been fine in big rainstorms or snowstorms, whatever. It's never, never given me a problem. I even took this thing on a snowmobiling trip last winter and I brought my GoPro and I brought this camera as well, but I brought the GoPro thinking the GoPro is the one I'd be using since it's like an action cam and it was really cold. And it's kind of funny because the GoPro actually stopped working about halfway through the trip because it was too cold. So I couldn't use the GoPro anymore, wouldn't even turn on. But this camera kept working even though it was like well below freezing and just like it was like a snowstorm outside and it kept operating. Like I've never, I don't know how cold it has to get before this thing won't turn on anymore, but I haven't hit that. So that's also pretty pretty amazing to me. It also does shoot in 4K 30 frames per second or 24 frames per second, uh, which is cool if you wanna you know, shoot in 4K, which I generally do, but to be honest with you, if you're like posting to YouTube, you can just shoot in 1080, you don't really need to use 4K, but it does shoot in 4K, which looks really good. Also, this camera has built-in image stabilization, which, basically means if you from what i understand is that like the sensor actually moves around inside of the camera it's like stabilized so if you have like bumpy footage it really like you know makes it a lot less bumpy which to me is one of the best features of this whole camera because it's amazing how smooth the footage you can get with this camera can handheld without needing like a gimbal or anything it's pretty amazing you put it in like premiere pro the editing software i'm using and put like a stabilizer on it it's like completely smooth footage so that's really good and also with photography i shoot up to like one second exposures on this camera 
handheld, like not on a tripod. Photos aren't blurry or anything. You have to have a pretty steady hand. But it's pretty amazing to me that you can take, you know, one second long exposures with this camera handheld with the image stabilization. That's uh, that's pretty amazing, and it's nice because I don't have to pull out the tripod every single time. If I want to do a half second exposure or one second exposure, I don't have to pull the tripod out to do that. Um, and I'm the kind of photographer that I only take out the tripod if I have to. So for me, it's like if this didn't have the image stabilization built in, I would have to take the tripod out every single time I wanted to do, you know, a half second exposure or one second exposure. I'd have to take the tripod out and put the camera on it. And now I guess do a handheld because the image stabilization is just that good. I think I just want to talk a bit about the photography and like the still side of this camera because although I have used it a lot for video like I am right now, I think I've actually used it, I use it more for photography and stills than I do for video. Um, and I just want to say like as a stills camera, it's really fantastic. Like I've been using it for over a year and a half now for all of my stills photography and there have been very few times where I've really pushed it past like its limitations. Now it is a micro four thirds sensor, so you're not gonna get the low light performance that you're gonna get with like a full frame camera, obviously. So to me, like any time where the lighting conditions are like, there's like a, a good amount of light, like you're obviously not gonna have any issues. Um, the only time that I've really pushed it, I feel like past its limitations is shooting at night. Um, especially if you're trying to do like astrophotography or anything like that it's this probably isn't the camera for that because i think you'd need a full frame camera if you were trying to do a lot of astrophotography low light photography but even shooting at like nighttime in like cities and stuff like that like i've used it for that and it, it works really well um so really i think that you're only gonna really hit the limitations with the sensor if you're trying to shoot a lot of low light photography which i just don't do a lot of low light photography with this um i pretty much shoot in the daytime or I shoot around like sunset sunrise. I very rarely shoot at night so especially for like astrophotography I do it for fun sometimes but it's not something that I do enough to justify getting a full frame camera. So for me the Micro Four Thirds works really great and it's really nice because it's such a like a smaller package you know the lenses are way smaller, the camera's a little bit smaller than a full frames full frame camera would be but also just being a lighter um, for me like I'm always going out into like the wilderness and hiking and camping and I need a camera that's gonna be like smaller and lightweight it's easier for me to carry around um, like on my back in a backpack that's just not too heavy or cumbersome to to carry with me now I feel like I've shared a lot of pros and things I like about this camera if I wanted to go over um, well I guess I just mentioned about the low light performance it's, it's probably not you know if you're shooting a lot of low light it's probably not gonna cut it for you but that's not why I have this camera, so that's not something that really bothers me most of the time. The one thing I would like to point out for video is that the autofocus is not as good as, I wouldn't say as good, it's not as fast as I would like it to be. Um, there are times that maybe I'm vlogging and you're carrying your camera around and you kind of want, you need the camera to focus on your face right away. And I found some settings on this that work pretty well, um, but sometimes there are times where I'll put it out and I it won't focus on my face for like you know a few seconds like five seconds or ten seconds it'll take it's like it'll search before it like focuses on on me um, so I found that the autofocus is kind of hit or miss like it's, it's pretty good but um, you kind of have to like work with it and, and just see how it works best for you like in this case right now I'm actually using the manual focus and I focused it manually myself to make sure that it was focused on me because I just didn't want the autofocus to ever be searching when I was shooting this. So in that case, I just sent a manual when I'm shooting a video like this, and I know it's going to be focused on me all the time because I set it myself. Overall, I think this is a really fantastic camera, especially if you're looking for something to vlog with like I've done with this, or even you know using for like stills photography for like landscape or honestly like whatever you're using it for. I mostly just shoot landscape photography. That's what I can speak for. But um, yeah, if you're looking for like a vlogging camera that's pretty versatile, you can kind of cover doing filming for like vlogs or videos, or you can do like stills photography with it. Um, you can get tons of different lenses that, that Lumex has available for this camera. There are so many lenses they have for the Micro Four Thirds system that I don't think that you're gonna be like lacking on options for a, a camera like this. If you're doing like videos or vlogs like, like I do, then I would recommend getting like a Rode Video Micro for it. Fantastic mic and the audio sounds great on it, so. 
for me, it's just been like the perfect setup for what I needed. I wouldn't really say this is a review on this camera, but it's kind of me just sharing my thoughts and my experiences using it for the past, uh, you know, a little over a year and a half now. Um, and I'm probably gonna continue using it for a, a bit longer before I upgrade to something else. That's all, that's all I have to say about that. A little bit different from my traditional video format that I would normally do, but I've been meaning to make this video for, for like over a year now. And I kind of just now got around to doing it. Subscribe if you'd like to see more content on, um, you know, travel, adventure, um, photography type of videos, then, you know, subscribe to my channel below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.